friends, welcome back. My name is Addie Gunnan. If you're new to my channel, welcome. We love thrift, vintage, and everything that expresses who we are here. And today is one of my most favorite things that I ever do. You know what it is. It is a thrift flip. I am so excited. I feel like I haven't done a thrift flip just for fun in a little while. The last thrift flip that I did, so last month's early October, was the Fullness Collection. So that was a collection of pieces that I took vintage fabrics and thrifted curtains and blankets and all kinds of stuff and made a very magical collection of poof dresses and tops. So you can actually shop that at the link below and today is going to be different but similar. This thrift flip is a little more themed than they usually are. Typically I just grab some clothing and just go for it and let the piece inspire me. But I went to the thrift store with a very specific idea for what I wanted and I'm sure you read the title and I know that this isn't really anything new but I'm obsessed with these quilted coats. I've been waiting for a while to make some. I actually had a whole collection of quilted denim jackets last year. Actually let me grab you one. I'll show you. So these were what I made last year. They have like quilted, tablecloth-y kind of material on the bottom and denim on top. And I just love them. And these two babies are actually also live on my website. So you can shop that at the link below too. But I have yet to make an actual quilted coat like straight from the blanket. And I finally thrifted the perfect quilts for it. So I cannot wait. I really wanted to find the perfect quilts for them that really felt like me. And I finally did that. So instead of chatting about them. We're just going to jump right in and get to this little DIY quilty coat cozy fall thrift flip. So let's get started. Okay, I went to the thrift store with a very specific idea for what I wanted for these quilt coats and I found magic. I found pure quilty yummy orange magic. I am so in love with this quilt. The simple design, it's a little bit of a thinner quilt and so I think it'll make a really good more all seasonal coat instead of like a big chunky cozy coat which I still love those too. There's like a little bit of a shine and so I think it'll almost play into that like puffer coat thing that's been really big for a while too but I love that it's more of like a nod to a quilted coat and something that maybe I can wear for a really long time but the reason that I thrifted this one specifically is that I want a long line maxi coat coat. So something like this. This is what I'm going for. Just very puffy, cozy, maybe even a little longer to do something like a bit of a duster. I cannot believe that this is so perfect for this. And actually there is so much of this fabric that I may be able to make something else with it too. So even if I did like a coat and then maybe did quilted pants like I did last year with that little quilted set thrift flip that I did. <gasps> That might be fun. We'll see how this one turns out. I'm just really excited to do it and we're gonna go after it. So let's take this gorgeous quilt and turn it into a gorgeous quilted coat. Let's do it. Okay, so we are starting off this incredible quilt coat journey by looking up patterns. I typically draft my own patterns, but when I'm doing something new, I like to make sure I understand the construction of the garment first. So I've linked similar coat patterns to the one I drafted below. Once I understand the construction more, I take my measurements. So for this one, since it's a long coat, I'm taking my bust, my hips, and then the length that I want from my shoulder to the hem. Then I use white craft paper to essentially draft a pattern for the bodice pieces. So I am also using a different coat that I like the shape of to just make sure that I fully get the right shape on this thing. And once I have my basic outline done, I retake a whole bunch of different measurements and just make sure my lines are all straight. Then cut out that piece and start using it as a template for my quilt. So I'm laying my quilt out flat on the floor because it's so big and then folding it in half because I want the two matching sides of the coat. I'm also using the finished edges of the quilt so I don't have to do a ton of hem work on the sides. Once I have those edges matched up, I'm getting my cutting mat underneath it, laying my piece flat and pinning it to the fabric to make sure it doesn't wiggle around while I'm trying to cut it. I also pinned down straight from the bottom of the pattern piece because I just didn't have it long enough and I knew it was just going to be a straight cut from there. So once I have all of that pinned out, I can start cutting. And I cut about a half inch away from the edge of the paper for seam allowance, which completed the front cut so I could move to the back piece where I just took the front piece and laid it on the doubled over edge and cut it out. 
Next comes all of the pinning and a little sneak peek of my dog who is making this floor so dirty, so sorry. <laughs> but I'm just pinning across the shoulder seams and down the side seams and then taking that to my machine and giving it a nice little straight stitch. And after trying it on to make sure it fit the way I want it to, I trimmed the edges from the outside of the seam and then gave it a zigzag seam, which is basically just a simple way to finish out those edges so they won't fray once the coat is done. So with the bodice of the coat done, I can now move on to the sleeves. And so I'm just measuring the sleeve hole to see the circumference that I need for the sleeve. And then using the excess fabric with the edges already complete so I won't have to hem the sleeve. And cutting a rectangle one inch longer than the circumference of the circle so I can have that half inch seam allowance. I pin those together to create the sleeve to straight stitch and zigzag stitch down that side to complete the sleeve, which means I can now attach the sleeve to the bodice. So I am taking those sleeves, flipping them inside out and making sure they're face to face to the outside of the garment. And pinning around the armhole edge. With that pinned, I'm going to be doing one straight stitch and then cut off any excess from the sleeve hole and then doing the zigzag stitch to make sure that it stays unfrayed. It's really shaping up and I'm so excited. And so then I cut two squares for the pocket and I don't know why I cut it out of the center of the fabric, but I did. <laughs> so once I have those two squares, I wanted to make the bottoms of the pockets rounded. And so I just cut a curve on both sides. With the shape done, I wanted to bind the edges to make them look very clean and adorable. And so I got some bias tape just from the store and measured all the way around the pocket to see how long it needed to be. I didn't want to do binding around the top though because I just liked the look of that. And so I cut my bias tape and then pinned the front of the bias tape to the front of the pocket like so. I then sewed a straight stitch where those pins were right down the first groove of the bias tape and then folded it around the pocket made sure it was all pinned down nicely, and then stitched the ditch on the front of the pocket to make sure I was picking up the fabric from the back of the bias tape to have a nice finished look. So once I had all the bias tape on, I zigzag stitched the top edge of the pocket to finish that off, and then folded it down once to have a smooth finish on the top of the pocket. These also kind of look like oven mitts to me, and I think it's super cute. But I pinned that down and straight stitched the pocket top down too, and my pockets are ready to be attached. But before I wanted to attach those, I wanted to get the snaps and collar in place, so for the collar, I cut out this funky kind of shape that I definitely forgot to film, so here's a picture of it. You can also find it in the patterns linked below. But once I had that cut out, I attached the binding to the outside of the collar the same way I did for the pockets. And with the binding attached, I could then attach it to the coat. I wanted a nice finished seam on the inside of the coat, and so I used the bias tape to cover the outside of the seam. So this is the collar sandwiched between the outside of the coat and the outside of the bias tape. So I finished the bias tape the same way I have with the rest of my bias tapes, and then I could move on to adding the snaps before the pocket. I knew I wanted this coat to have seven snaps total and so I measured from the top of the collar to the hem and then just divided that by seven to figure out the distance between the snaps. So once I had all of those pinned out, I could start using my little tools to put my snaps on. For tools, I have my snap pliers. I'll link these below and then I have just a bunch of little snaps that are bronzy, which I think looks so pretty with the rest. So then I can start applying them where I pinned earlier. So this is super easy and super fun. I just place the top piece where I want it to go, put the bottom piece in the little cup and then just squeeze until it is attached. Repeat the same process on the inside snap of the coat and then keep going until all of your snaps are done. Oh my goodness, we are so close to this coat being done. All we need to do now is attach the pockets. And so I took a minute to decide whether I wanted them to be a little tilted or straight on. And I decided on straight on. So I adjusted the tilted pocket to match the exact measurements of the other pockets so they would match. And then once I had all the measurements set and the pockets pinned down where I wanted them to go, I stitched the ditch to attach the pocket to the front of the coat and to hide the seam. And this coat is complete. So incredible. You can probably hear the rain because I'm in my backyard shed, but this is absolutely amazing. The color is insane. I knew immediately when I saw this quilt that it was going to be the most gorgeous coat. But then the pattern on it is so good. It's nice and lightweight. But I love this little pointy collar. The trim on it is actually just slightly off the color so it's a little contrasted and you can kind of see that in the pockets too. So it puts a little pop on it but it's just so cute and fits exactly how I want it. The length, the snaps, Oh, this is so good, and I'm so glad we started here. Let's keep on moving through some more quilted coats. Let's do it. Just, 
everything that I hoped it would be and I'm so excited to make another one so we are going to use some quilt pieces I found a bunch of pillowcases and they're just beautiful but I love that the color palettes kind of went together on these you can kind of see they have those blues reds greens and I love that they're so Americana and so I think that these will be really beautiful to kind of put together and they're also pretty thin so I think this again will make a really good cozy coat but it can be worn more than just like in the dead of winter when it's really cold so my idea for these pieces are sort of this style of coat. I'm thinking I want it a little shorter, like a little short shop coat I think would be so cute. I'm thinking of doing one as the bodice and one as the sleeve because I definitely don't have enough in just one piece of fabric to do the whole coat. Part of me also kind of wants to turn one of these into a vest, but I think for now I am going to make a coat and maybe we'll actually make a vest at the end of this video. We'll see because that sounds like a really fun idea. <laughs> so let's get another quilt coat going. For this coat, I am essentially doing the same process as the orange coat, but it will be a little different because I'm changing up the collar and the length, and so I'm using the same pattern piece. But first, I'm going to take that pillowcase and fold it in half hot dog style. I'm going to be using the other half of this fabric for the back piece of this coat, and so I don't want to go over that little folded line on the pillowcase you can see here. So I'm going to pin the pattern in place whoa that was a lot of peas and then cut around it to make my two front pieces and luckily again I can use the hem of the quilt for the hem of the coat so I won't have to do all the extra edging I'm also leaving a half inch seam allowance on this coat too so once I get the front pieces done I'm going to repeat that process on the back laying that face to face with the folded edge and cutting around that to complete the pieces for this coat then I'm laying my front and back pieces face to face and pinning up the sides and shoulders to make the bodice. Once those are all pinned, I can do the straight stitch and the zigzag stitch to complete that seam. And this bodice came together really quickly. Oh my gosh, okay, I was just looking through my pile of quilts. I'm not sure why, but I was. And I found the other quilted pillowcase to the first one that I had. So now I can make one cohesive jacket out of all the same pattern, which I'm so excited about. So I will probably be using this one for something else. So let's keep on going with this amazing quilted coat. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited that I found the other fabric. So I went ahead and cut it in half because I know that half of it is going to be one sleeve and the other half the other. And so I'm folding those in half and then pinning up the side using the side that's already hemmed so I don't have to create another hem. So once I have that pinned up, I'm doing a straight stitch, cutting off excess, and then doing the zigzag stitch again to finish off the sleeve. So for attaching the sleeve, it's the same process as before, making sure that they are face to face. And another point here for attaching the sleeves is to really make sure that your seams line up at the armpit. And so I always start pinning from the armpit seam to make sure that it's going to match up and then just pinning all the way around this sleeve. I also just realized that I didn't take any videos of me sewing the sleeves together or on so they're on now but we are going to move on to the collar and so I had an extra strip of fabric from the sleeves that I cut out and so I'm going to do a similar shape as before in this image but I'm going to make it bigger and then round the edges so I'll have a nice round collar. So once that's cut out I do the same process where I put the bias tape around the outside of the collar so I'm pinning the front of the bias tape to the front of the collar and only covering the edges with bias tape that are going to be exposed so the actual collar so the piece that is attaching to the jacket will not have bias tape on it so we're sewing the bias tape down and then rolling it over the other side of the collar pinning it down so that we can stitch the ditch and have that all connected up so that we can attach our collar I'm using the same process again as I used on the orange coat and so you can see it a little bit better here where I sandwiched the front of the collar to the inside of the coat and then the bias tape was on the other side so it's a little opposite from normal sewing but the way that the collar rolls this is how you want it to be. So once I had that pinned and sewn, I did the same thing with the bias tape where I folded it over, pinned it down, stitched the ditch, and we are almost done with this piece. Next step is to apply the snap. So I'm measuring that length and dividing it by the amount of snaps that I want using the same snaps that I used earlier and a little trick that I kind of learned as I was doing the snaps on the first jacket was to put the snaps where you want them to be on the coat and then kind of scoot your tool around them and then clamp as quickly as possible. I messed up a couple of them and had to go get some more. They're easy but they still have a little bit of a learning curve to them and once I got the hang of it I was really just off running and I wanted to put three snaps on this little coat since it's more cropped and once I had all the snaps on it was done! <laughs> This is too 
die for. <gasps> I will never be able to get over all of these amazing quilted pieces. I see now why everyone's been obsessed with them forever. But I just love this one. The pattern makes it so fun, but it still has this really good neutral base so you can wear it with everything. But I went with a really big rounded color for this one. And I have three little snaps on here, but I love the length of it. And I didn't actually have enough to make a really long sleeve. And so this is kind of like a three quarter length flare sleeve, but it gives it a little bit of a kimono feel. And I actually kind of love it. It makes it a little different and you can even do like long gloves with it or even with this turtleneck popping out underneath it with the sleeve. It's just so cute and I love this so much and I am in love. I think I'm going to do one more thing because I have the third quilt piece that I wanted to do. So we're going to do one more. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, I know we switched it up a little bit and I found the other pillowcase to that first pillowcase and ended up making a very cohesive jacket, more than a mishmashy one, and I'm in love with it. But I figured I would make a vest out of the last piece. So here is the final piece of quilting that we are going to be messing with today. You just saw it a little bit on the last flip. Love that it has the two-tone kind of same pattern going on. So it is screen printed. It's not super quilted. And I think that'll actually be really good for this vest because then it won't be super bulky, but it'll still have the same kind of look. I also just love the colors and pattern of this one. I think it'll make a really cute vest. And I'm thinking of going after this kind of idea for this vest. I think like a cropped kind of oversized, something that would just make jeans and a button down look really cool. I'm trying to figure out whether I want to make it snap front or not, but I think that I really just want it to look like a sweater vest sort of style. So we are going to go after a vest with this quilt for our final flip of the day. Let's do it. <laughs> This one should be pretty simple, so we're starting with it folded in half and using the same pattern piece. And there's actually a line halfway up the design that I'm going to be splitting the front and back halves from, so it made it really easy to cut this out. But once I had it set where I wanted it to be along the edge, I used my rotary tool to cut out my pieces and then I flipped it over to do it on the other side on the fold for my back. And a little YouTube magic later, all of my pieces are cut out and ready to be pinned. So I'm laying them face to face and pinning up the sides and the shoulder just as I did earlier and then doing a straight stitch on all of those seams and then cutting off excess and doing a zigzag stitch to finish them. Now that all of my inside edges are complete and clean, I now need to clean up the outside edges, which I'm just going to use bias tape for again. This is just a really great way to get all of your edges nice and clean without having to roll them. Especially for quilting, this is a great way to cover your edges because then you won't get big bulky rolled hems. So I measured around the armhole and my neck opening and I cut my bias tape to match those measurements. And then I am opening it up and kind of pressing it with my fingers a little to give it a little bit more pliability and so then once I have it where I want it to be I'm pinning it face to face with the edge of the armhole and pinning that down all the way around and then doing the same thing you've heard so many times in this video already so say it with me we're sewing it down we're folding it over we're pinning it down we're stitching the ditch <laughs> I repeated that same process for the bias tape cover on the other armhole and the neck opening and that means that this vest is completely done exactly what I was hoping for from a cute little quilted vest. I love the boxiness of it. It almost has like a little bolero jacket kind of feel with how mega crop this is, but I love that it'll hit like right above a high-waisted pant and so it just gives like a really good line. I will absolutely be wearing this over like long sleeved maxi dresses and button downs with jeans to just add an extra pop and I love that it's collarless but it can still kind of fold out. Little square shoulder up here that almost gives it like a little cap sleeve is just so cute and I'm just loving all of these pieces and I cannot believe I finally have them. Thank you so much for thrift flipping with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did and that you're inspired to just go try and make all of the fun pieces that you wanted forever. Follow me on Instagram at the link below to get more thrift flip fun. Let me know which quilted dream is your favorite in the comments below and subscribe to my channel. You are well loved. See you next week. Bye!